and the plot thickens. So, today we are talking about Columbus Blue Jackets head coach Mike Babcock. Yeah, you gotta remember, this guy's the coach of the Blue Jackets. He's back in the NHL. I know a lot of Columbus fans already know that, but for those who are not in Ohio, you kind of have to remember these things, and you have to force yourself to do so. There's been so much going on in the NHL that I feel like that news that Babcock was hired is kind of been pushed to the back burner, but either way... Babcock is the new Columbus head coach, and what he did the other day was have himself an interview on the Fan Morning Show in Toronto. Take a look at this. It was on Sportsnet. Leafs, Reflections, and New Beginnings with Mike Babcock. Link is going to be in the description to an article that goes out there and has the audio hit attached to it. But the main idea within this article is what I wanted to read about in this video. Take a look at the title of this piece. Blue Jackets coach Mike Babcock says... Did I think I did anything wrong? Absolutely. Mike Babcock went out there on Toronto Sports Radio and talked about his tenure as the Leafs head coach. He speaks out about his regrets, what he did, what he did wrong and poorly as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. He talks about the Marner incident. It's a very intriguing read, so I wanted to go out there and just kind of share some ideas, bounce them off the dome here as to what it is that Babcock says in this article. The main quote is right at the top here. Do I like how I was talked about after I left Toronto? No, Babcock told the Fan Morning Show on Thursday. Do I think I did anything wrong? Absolutely. The article then provides context here. Babcock came under fire during his time with the Maple Leafs for reportedly asking Mitch Marner to rank the hardest working players on the team during Marner's rookie season in 16-17. The rankings then got back to the entire team after Babcock referenced the list in a conversation with Tyler Bozak, which showed Marner placing veterans Nazem Kadri, JVR, and Bozak near the bottom. And can we just relive that a little bit here? Remember when that news story eventually leaked? That was such a big deal. Everybody was talking about, yo, look at Babcock. He told his young rookie to rank the players on the team in terms of their work ethic, and then the players learned about the list. Like, how damaging is that for one's reputation in the locker room for you to be outing out your teammates? Imagine how Marner must have felt. He was only 19, and he was being treated like this, and all the veterans on the team knew that Marner thought that they didn't really have work ethic, and that was such a big thing, and it was a really thriving news story when we learned about it. However, this is what Babcock goes out there and talks about in regards to this situation. Well, first thing I would say to you is, I answer these questions over and over again, Babcock said when asked about whether he felt the need to change. And I'm happy to do that in saying that I've got nothing to hide. I'm not trying to hide from anything I've ever done. I think it's important you own any mistake you made and you try to get better. He also says this, You're trying to be a better coach, trying to be a better person. To me, the last three and a half years have been a gift from God. And what I mean by that is, for my wife and I and my family, we found so much joy in doing things that you love to do, and when you're in the rat race like I was for a long, long time, I think sometimes you're just spinning so fast. You enjoy that time to breathe a little bit, and then you can get outside your body and have a look at who you are and say, hey, these are things I've got to improve. Now, ultimately, that's all that... Babcock has to say that is written about in this piece. Of course, the interview is a little bit longer. The audio is in the description link as well. But what this kind of goes over is it talks about Babcock's idealism to change and how he wants to improve from what it was that he had been in the past and how he admits that for a time he was so deep into the rabbit hole of being this rough and tough NHL coach that it kind of got to him a bit. And I'm not going to go out there and sympathize 100% with Babcock, but what I also wanted to do was go over onto the Our Hockey sub and read some comments here made by the users regarding this Babcock conversation. The article was posted by Zoidberg22 onto Our Hockey, and this is what... Oh boy, I'm going to have a tough time reading this one. Domo Arigato... Dr. Lobato, that's what it is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do I like how I was talked about after I left? No, Babcock told the Fan Morning Show. Maybe this is on me for being judgmental myself, but I did not expect such a self-aware answer from a guy who seems like he's the very definition of an old-school hardhead. The guy saw all the criticism and said, darn, I think I goofed. I should reflect on this and better myself. When most people just double down and insist that modern players are too coddled or whatever. Good for you, Babs. Ghost Curse 123 then replies saying this, I read somewhere that his daughter sat him down and had a long chat about the way he treated others. Not sure how much truth there is to that, though. 
Leaf Blower replies saying this, I've followed a few of his interviews since it was announced he was our head coach, and I've heard that circulate a lot. A rough quote was something along the lines of, Dad, it's not what you say to people, it's how you say it. He goes on to talk about how he realizes there's no one approach to dealing with players, that even if you think you had a decent one-on-one -on -one with a player, they could walk away thinking something entirely different. He highlighted that he needs to have a different relationship with every single player and handle things accordingly. And you know, I'm not going to go out there and disagree. There is a very big difference and nuance in terms of how you say stuff versus what you say stuff. What you say is whatever. Everybody kind of says the same thing, work hard, do this, do that. If there are any specific, you know, instructions, then they'll go out there and deliver that news. But it's how you say it that will ultimately determine how things resonates with players and how they respond to it. Babcock has a whole bunch of history that is not great, and even at the end of this article in the Sportsnet piece, it talks about his time with Johan Franzen, bully, attacking people, worst person I've ever met. Chris Chelios went out there and said the same thing, or not said the same thing, but he reinforced the Franzen comments, and then Babcock, gold medals, three-time finalist, and Columbus, etc., etc. There has been a lot with Babcock. So, if this is true, where at the point of where he is right now, Mike Babcock is, how old is the guy? He is 60 years old. If at the ages of 57 to 60, he really was able to reevaluate the way that he coaches, the way that he talks to people, not the way that he talks about hockey, not the way that he goes out there and tells his players what specific line changes or dumping strategies to do, but in the way he does it. If he's able to go out there and completely reevaluate that, then okay, that's some pretty good growth. But, of course, this right now is all just off-season talk. He got hired a while ago. He's been doing his media tours. It's whatever. We'll have to wait and see when the actual fight goes down on the Blue Jackets bench, when they're in the middle of a game, when things don't go their way, and when these players decide to play for him and when they choose to play for him. We may see ourselves another conversation in a few years saying, oh, when Babcock was the Blue Jackets head coach, he did this. He asked the players to rank players or, oh, he's also a bully. He never changed. We'll see what happens as time goes on. But for right now in 2023 in the summer, these are some pretty good self-reflective comments. I'm not going to go out there and discredit that. So, for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the way Mike Babcock went out there on Sportsnet Radio and reflected this situation? He goes out there and talks about how he was treated by the media. He talks about how this forced him to look at himself. He talked about how coaching away from the NHL was able to allow him to get back to his family and just enjoy life again. You gotta remember, he was also coaching in the Canadian college scene. So that is a completely different dynamic than the NHL. Coaching for the University of Saskatchewan, where you're not coaching pro players. These guys are not, you know, top of the line pro athletes. These are college kids. They're going out there and studying for their econ final right after the hockey game on the weekend. Like they have themselves such a different life that Mike Babcock has to go out there and open his eyes a little bit. You can't be treating these kids in the University of Saskia program like Mitch Marner on the Toronto Maple Leafs making $10 million a year. They're just not the same. So maybe that also changed a bunch of his perspective in regards to coaching players and forming relationships with his players. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this entire thing with Babcock. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Rolls 99. And bye.